Suge Knight, mm-hmm. since last time we talked, has accepted a 28-year plea deal. And, you know, this whole story is very close to home because you and Terry were, were very close. He was actually your manager for a while mm-hmm. as well as a, a close friend. Hearing that Suge got such a huge amount of time, did it bring any sort of closure to losing Terry? For me, it really didn't. And it it really can't until I have a conversation with Suge. At some point, somehow, you know, I believe we will talk because I talked to him when I was fighting my case before. And, you know, um, I don't know how he could, you know, just be that callous after just, you know, to try to maintain an image after you just killed your friend, you know, the way he turned himself in. That that really soured me on just, you know, because I, I never looked at Suge as, oh, you know, big monster like that, you know, because I dealt with monsters all my life. That's all I deal with. So, you know, we had our own relationship, and it was respectful, you know, and it was a lot of humor involved in it, you know, because he likes to joke around and fuck around. But, you know, I, I want to know, you know, when he walked in and turned himself in and the cameras was out there and, you know, he just put the cigar out and put it in the tree and said, yeah, you know, I'll be back to get this in the morning, you know, and just, you know, walked in like like it wasn't nothing. I didn't see no remorse or no, you know, confusion or, you know, uh, he wasn't, he didn't even seem to be unsettled. And then when I heard what had happened in the interim of that going on and him bagging up and running over Terry and everything, you know, he he just, you know, went allegedly, you know, went freshened up, you know what I'm saying? He knew what was coming, you know. Parlay with his little piece or whatever, and um, you know, hey man, let me go get this out the way. Like, like it was it was nothing, and it, you know, I'm not. I don't want to sit here and pretend that, you know, I'm just so broke up about it that you know what I'm saying it it just disturbs me to that degree. But it's like I would want to know, like, damn man, how could you knock your boy off like that, and then it not even show on you. You know what I'm saying? At a, you know, when, when when it came time to get in front of the county, it might even help this case. You know, like I don't even want to say nothing right now. You know what I'm saying? I you know, my best friend just died. You know, a good friend of mine just died. You know, I talk to y'all when I can or whatever. But he shook, so you know what I mean? It is what it is. Yeah, I mean I just interviewed uh Reggie Wright Jr. Yeah. And uh, he told me something interesting. He said, "The whole he's known Suge since they were in elementary school. And he said the one time that he saw Suge really, like, stressed out and looking worried and scared was right after the MGM incident. He did five and a half years, really, trying to move everybody off of Baby Lane. He really was, if you really look at the tape, he was really trying to get, he yeah. sneaks one in. Yeah, he, 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 kicks, he sneaks he kicks, one in. He kicks lane. He, I, sneaks, I, one, <laughs> he sneaks one in. It, the judge on the bench there, after reviewing the tape 13 times, I determined <laughs> you kicked him. Yeah. Uh, you know, he sneaks one in. Yeah. Uh, but he was really trying to get people off of him because he knew all the cameras and yeah. all the situation. I, was, I saw him that morning. You I, saw him that morning. I, I agree. I agree. Okay. He was nothing like that. And he had just, you know what I'm saying? But it was two deaths. Well, he hadn't died right then, but he was shot up, and he probably seen how bad he was. Well, no, no, no. Took yeah. him off. No, you talking about that after he after he was shot? No, or, no, no. Right after the injury. Right after incident? they stomped out oh, okay. Orlando. Okay. Oh, he probably knew something was coming. Yeah, right after they stomped out Orlando, he said that was when he, he, he looked at Suge, and Suge looked really worried. Like, and then I saw Suge like 
maybe six hours later. Yeah. You know, five, was, six hours later, and that was after Pac had been shot and he was yeah. in the hospital. We all rolled out there to Suge's house. You and know. Suge was really like. Yeah, Suge, you know, he told us the story out of his mouth. I saw the nick on his head and everything. You know what I'm saying? That's why you strip off people like, like, man, I don't care how good somebody shoot. You know, when they were saying yeah. Suge set Pac up to get killed. Yeah, nick me in my head, but go on and kill him. You know, I, I would graze me in the skull. Yeah, I wouldn't put that on the best <laughs> seal sniper in existence. You know, but uh, yeah, yeah, make sure you don't get any brain along the way. Just, just the skull. Yeah, I'm like, how could y'all imagine that the man got hit in the head and I saw it? So you know, he was relating the story about how it all unfolded from there mm -hmm. to where they was at and how they slid up and everything. And I was just like. I was like, yeah, man, this dating brought gang banging to Vegas. Like, it, it's gang banging out there. It wasn't mm -hmm. new then, but you know, when sets really start migrating out there and, and increasing in, in size, yeah. yeah they, this is all LA guys doing it, though. Yeah. That, that particular oh, yeah. night. Yeah. Um, Expansion. So, so I, I talked to, uh, to Reggie about the case, and apparently, Reggie's been talking to Suge over the of phone course, of course. in prison. The day they go back. Mm -hmm. And the way he explained it, it was kind of similar to the conversation you and I had, mm -hmm. but, but it was, it was, a, there was a little bit of a, of a difference from what I learned, was that the reason why Suge took that plea deal mm -hmm. was because he was facing three different charges, three different felonies. There was, you know, the, the Terry situation, but there was also the situation with um, the girl and her camera, mm -hmm. and there was some other situation. I think like he had punched somebody or, or, or something. Right. There was three different situations. He would have had to beat all three of those cases in trial and then beat the appeals afterwards because he felt that, you know, they would try to appeal each one of those. And the reason why they he took... They him. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. And he just felt that he had essentially a zero chance to win six court, court dates in a row. And that's why he took the 28 years. Because it has an actual release date. Plus, he explained to me that in county you get double time. You know anything about that? No, that's not true. That's that's a, that's a hope and a prayer. You know, it's like when you go to, <laughs> when, you, when you go to court, they'll assess you whatever time you've been in there fighting your case. Yeah, and they might say. Credit for 742 days, but when you go to your next facility, your, uh, um, what is the, what they call this shit, uh, I'm glad I've been away from prison so long that I forgot <laughs> can't this remember shit. this shit. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, uh, it's a reception center. So okay. when you go to the next, to your reception center prior to going to prison, they'll, Break down all the time you was in there, how much time you get credit for, all of this, and then you know that's that's what they go by. So okay, the 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 day yeah the halftime and all that that's just hoping you know you just okay. trying to bring everything together. Okay, and then if I go to a drug <laughs> program when I'm two years to the house, I'll only do twenty three years and all that. So yeah, yeah, that's just that's just wishful, wishful. Thing. Yeah, I mean he's fifty something years old already. Yeah. Uh, he's gonna get out close to eighty, maybe a little earlier. Yeah, at least at least mid seventies. Mid seventies. Yeah, well, I mean, essentially, the reign of terror uh, of Suge Knight in the streets of L.A. I think is essentially over at this point. I think it's been over. Now nah, he he still kept kind of pushing the line. I mean, think about it. He it was pushing the line. It wasn't as effective, and... though. It wasn't as effective later on. After he after he lost the empire of Dre and Snoop yeah. and Nate and Jewel and the Dog Pound and Tupac. Yeah. You know, when he came back for the second wave, shout out to Crooked Eye once again. He he held up the banner mostly over there. Corrupt was still back and forth from over there. Dad yeah. was still back and forth from over there. But it wasn't a powerhouse any longer. Yeah. Now, and his behind-the-scenes dealings and things like that, 
I talked to Terry a couple of times, and he would he would let me know certain you know meetings they had went to and things that was going on. So I know he was still pushing his influence, but it was nowhere near magnified as when he had the whole operation behind him, and he was the right. You know, well, because I think force. ultimately, like what it came down to was, I think Suge knew if it went to trial, it was going to come out. That he was not invited there. He was there to push the issue. Yeah. It, that part was going to come out. And in the process of you being Suge, <laughs> being the stereotypical Suge, somebody dies. So you can't say, I was just getting a hamburger and then suddenly someone got run over. Right. I, I, I don't know what happened. Right. <laughs> I was that, just trying to get a milkshake. That was like, you know, Tab is my favorite burger it, spot. It, yeah. Can't say that. It wasn't the flu. It wouldn't have flew. Not with an yeah. intelligent jury. No. You know. Not even with a Hick jury. Not even I don't with think that would <laughs> <laughs> he could have tried that in the backwoods of Virginia. I don't yeah, think man. that would have flew right there. 